So back to compassion fatigue as a uh, unique challenge to animal welfare. A quarter of all the dogs and cats in shelters are euthanized every year in the United States. Jeez. I actually found a study published January 17th, 2020, this year, a okay. couple months ago. Okay. They wanted to assess the relationship between a shelter's live release rate, which is how many animals come into the shelter and then are either adopted out or released to the wild if they're wildlife. So they're looking for a relationship between a shelter's live release rate as well as the involvement in euthanasia decision making on mental health. Okay. So they're looking to see if this shelter has this much of a live release rate, how does it affect the worker's mental health? And then on top of that, they also factored in if they're involved in a decision making. So like those okay. DP meetings we talked about. Yeah. So the, the big people who make those hard decisions. Right. Yeah. So what do you think they found? If I'm understanding this right, I think a shelter who has a, a higher live release rate, right. they're going to have obviously less compassion fatigue. Because of less, because of less, death youth, and yeah, less... yeah, absolutely. Um, and then obviously the opposite for the ones who have lower, right? They found that in shelters with the higher live release rate, the emotional trauma was greater. Why? I don't really know, and I, I don't think that they have an answer, but I can probably speculate that a shelter that performs well and has a good live release rate, you have a bigger bond with these animals. Yeah, and I could see that. And you're more involved hands-on as compared to we know of other shelters that are literally a revolving door for animals. So they mm -hmm. come in seven days straight, hold euthanized. There's you're no so sense used in even to walking them. Yeah, they're just so used so to the, it. So you know, especially New York, New York City, all the pounds over there. Yeah. They would do hundreds a day of euthanasias. They don't bother making a relationship. Yeah. We had the opportunity to create bonds over weeks mm -hmm. with these animals to the point where they're a great dog for us. Remember when Giraffe got adopted? Yeah. I was so happy and so sad. So I know exactly what you're talking about right now. And I, and I think that's probably hitting the nail on the head. I didn't know who to love. <laughs> you know, I had all yeah. this love for one dog. You know, I, I spent time with other dogs, but she was my girl for what, six months? Mm -hmm. And then she got adapted by this fabulous couple two dads and they weren't far and they were just so wonderful and they made her even fatter than she was already and I couldn't have picked a better family for her but it like when I came in the next day and she wasn't there I didn't know what to do with myself so I want to read that study so yeah we have the whole thing so the name of the study is the occupational health of animal shelter employees by live release rate shelter type and euthanasia related decision that's from the Multidisciplinary Journal of the Interactions of People and Animals, volume 33, pages 119 to 131. Approximately a quarter of dogs and cats in animal shelters in the United States are euthanized. The stress associated with having to care for animals they subsequently euthanize puts animal shelter workers at a high risk for compassion fatigue, burnout, and even suicide. The aim of the present study was to assess the relationship between a shelter's live release rate defined as the percent of animals that leave the animal shelter with a positive outcome and the involvement in euthanasia-related decision-making on employees' mental health. An online nationwide survey was administered to 153 municipal and private shelter workers consisting of the impact of the event, the professional quality of life questionnaire, the moral injury event scale, and questions relating to their work environment. A multivariate regression model found that compassion satisfaction, secondary traumatic stress, moral injury, and burnout were positively correlated with live release rate. This suggests that although job satisfaction is greater in shelters with more positive outcomes, trauma may also be greater. The T-test revealed that employees who euthanize have higher moral injury scores compared to those who do not. A second multivariate regression model found that deciding which animal to euthanize predicted increased secondary traumatic stress. Overall, the data shows that live release rates and decisions surrounding euthanasia play a role in occupational trauma. Furthermore, the data provides support for further exploration of moral injury in animal shelter workers. I find that to be super important mm -hmm. because if you're leading an animal shelter with a very high live release rate, mm -hmm. you're not having compassion fatigue on your radar. Your guard is down. You're not thinking about your staff because you're yeah. thinking, wow, they could they could be over in New York City where they euthanize 300 a day. We euthanize three a month. Yeah. It's not on your radar and you're going to get caught with your pants down. So that's a huge challenge is to keep that in your mind. Remember that regardless of your live release rate and actually more important, if you have a high live release rate, you probably have a higher chance of having widespread compassion fatigue through your staff and you need to address it 